I was really irritated. I bought the late war, like the new late war starter sets for fourth edition. Yeah. And they come with 88s, and it says all plastic, except the 88 crew is metal. So it comes with the old 88 crews. But they got the big things and stuff. Wait, right, we're gonna we're live. Oh, wait, well we're not live live, but we're just gonna start recording. Yeah. Boom. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm here down at Imaginary Wars, and they were kind enough to offer us a look at their new Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soul Wars box, and the Malign Sorcery box as well. So lots of stuff to take a look at. Um, we're going to start off with the Soul Wars box. I am joined by... Kyle. Kyle's the store owner here at Imaginary Wars, and uh, it's, he's always putting on an awesome time, so uh, definitely if you're in the Calgary parts, come check it out. I'm also joined by... Greg. Daniel. And Daniel, as I'm pointing to people in front of the camera. Funny. Uh, okay, so um, we're going to take a look at the Soul Wars box first. Uh, this is something we've all been waiting for. It's the second edition of Age of Sigmar with a whole bunch of rules. Uh, we're basically just going to cover the box contents, and we'll be looking at the models, which of course are looking pretty darn solid. Uh, on the back, we've got the uh, usual thing. We've got the uh, Warhammer Age of Sigmar. Uh, we've got a bunch of really cool new characters uh, for both the Stormcast and for the uh, the new dead guys. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing how these all work out. Uh, the box art itself is pretty cool, uh, and they're foreshadowing a whole bunch of different terrain. So, okay, so let's uh, get the cellophane off, as it's going to be all um, it's going to be all shiny here with the lights. So we'll pull the cellophane off and take a look. And then we'll cut and pull out cell yeah. So you're perfectly in frame there. Uh, I can't see the line source. So you can see the, oh, the title, yeah. but you can't see you the You know what? I, what can I just turn this sideways and you can see it? Sure. Yeah. That way you can see what's in frame. There you go, man. Perfect. Thanks, man. Is that going to be on the video? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it should be on the video for sure. That's for sure. Sauce Uncut. Okay, here we go. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the, the box itself. Cellophane's off, so uh, the light reflections aren't going to be too bad. Uh, they've got this really nice kind of cover that they've done with all of their other games, and it is really nice. Uh, you get some pretty solid, almost frameable artwork up at the front, uh, which is really cool. And, of course, we pull that out, and that looks like all of our sprues and models in there as well. Pretty pleased uh, with the packaging. The funny thing is, too, is it smells really good, uh, which is pretty sweet. Uh, we've got our a full-sized core rule book, which is uh, which is pretty crap hot, actually. I love that. Uh, it's a lot better than getting that little mini rule book. I think the mini rule books are a little bit more practical, but this is this is a real thing, very much like the eight bed box for uh, for forty k. So. Digging it, awesome. Uh, in there as well, we also have the uh, battle for uh, Glim's Forge, and uh, we can see that we've got uh, cards in the back as well. Ooh, are those unit cards? That would be really cool. Um, so we'll take a look at those. Beautiful. And then at the very bottom, we've got the rest of the box. Uh, we've got all of our bases. Comes with another ruler, which is pretty neat. And uh, a simple, a sample chapter. Oh, you got to leave me a little bit of uh, a bit of history going in there as well for you. So just a small uh, sample chapter of a book. They haven't done that in the Black Library stuff for a while, I don't think. Yeah, the last one I saw was the, um, I think it was the Black Crusade book, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. That was in there? Yeah. Sweet. Nice deal. And you get dice. Nobody wants the dice until everybody wants the dice. There's all of a sudden, people start looking for them a little bit later. So, getting that out of the way, uh, let's take a look at the, uh, first of all, let's take just a quick, quick look at the rule book. The joys of video is I can just fade when I screw up the opening. Remove sellotape immediately bursts into fire. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's really nice how they framed it on it. Looks a little higher quality than, than some of the other books they've done. Yeah, it's got that kind of matte gloss. You can definitely see with the lights for sure. But it's, and it feels good too. Like it's got a nice kind of weight. And they've even got like the little, little bookmarky ribbon as well. A little bit more kind of ancient tome. I think the 8th edition codex has that for 40K, right? Oh, the 8th edition rules? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So you, you can mark off where you need to get back to all the time. Oh, look at that. Yeah, and it's actually the, the, the papers are really nice, kind of heavy weight as well. Again, it smells like new stuff, which is great. But lots and lots of artwork. 
really cool, lots of history. And that's, again, one of the big criticisms. And I think one of their big pushes was to to really increase kind of the, the fluff part of Sigmar. Yeah, and it looks like a lot of new art. So one thing, you know, you've seen a couple 40K wow, books, you that. see the same art, but that actually, uh, yeah, it looks really interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I saw, actually, turn back one page there. Uh, look at that. That's oh, great. Yeah, look at the color. Yeah. But the paper is really, really nice. Like, I, I love, like, it's, it's a quality product for sure. Tons of color. Yeah, and I really like that they're really working, like, everything's gilded on the side, and it's different for every page, too. Based so they, on what realm you're in, I guess. Based on what realm, yeah. I was really surprised when the full rule book was coming uh, with the box set, because the box set was such a good deal by itself. Uh, so yeah, really, really impressive to see such a full quality book in it. Yeah, and like the, the cost of the rule book on its own is half the box easy, yeah. right? Uh, and they were also talking about really showing maps, and they, yeah. <laughs> they laughed and they said maps and maps and maps and maps and maps. Uh, there's so much gloss going on, I gotta lift it up here, but uh, like loads and loads of maps. Well, look at that, it has each one of the realms. That's cool. That's a real yeah. fight. It's not a true book unless there's more <laughs> maps than there is words on the page. Now you know it's a fantasy yeah. product. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Like, not a Warhammer fantasy, but like a Lord of the Rings fantasy. And it's just fluff and fluff and fluff. This is awesome. Oh, yeah. oh look at that. Yeah, yeah. See, see, there's the realm of metal. So yeah, it's got all the different actual realms there. That's really cool. So this is something that you would genuinely spend some decent time kind of working your way through. They're talking about some of the, and I imagine that some of these, like the Serpentine City, uh, Scrap of Spill, so this is all going to be essentially, you know, elements that we've seen in the books, I'm, I'm positive. Yeah, very nice quality. Uh, the Realm of Beasts. So literally, it's, it's, you're just getting all this backdrop, and I think that's one of the biggest selling, fac uh, selling uh, factions, I can see it right there. Um, one of the selling factors for the, 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 the series and the game and all that is that, you're in this living, breathing thing. That's one of the things that made 40K so amazing. And one of the criticisms of Sigmar. So they are definitely taking that on. And then they go into all the different races. There's the Daughters of Cain and the Yondeth. I can't wait to read the, that one about why they're in order and, you know, not say destruction because evil snake lady is evil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, she's evil with it, but she points it at the bad guys, That's right? That's uh, yeah. So when you get to the chaos section, it, it changes the theme and the edge of the book. If you can see on the left there, it's yeah. actually, you can see where it goes from gold to And it's to darker, red. right? Yeah, it's yeah. darker and kind of redder and yeah. a little more, on, the font's a little bit different on stuff. Definitely a lot of production value going in. Yeah, this is huge. This is epic. Monstrously good. Ah, and then when you get into death, it has another edging on it. See how the edge changes? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, a lot of attention to detail. Yeah, beautiful. Really, really nice. And what I like is that it's not... They haven't turned the game into... I think a lot of people are wanting a lot more depth, but I think it's the interactions and the simplicity uh, in the game that make it, uh, make it really worthwhile. So there you're getting into the rules and the missions and battle plans at this point. Yeah, loads of battle plans. All artifacts. the allegiance abilities, the artifacts. You know what? They've really simplified that, which is really nice. So instead of having multi pages per faction, it looks like you can really unpack an entire faction on one page, so you don't have to keep flipping. Ooh, and then there's the ones for the different realms now. Oh, ah, see, this is the big one. That a lot of people were looking forward to was they're going to give a lot more detailed rules for setting your games inside different realms, so it's less generic. Everything's kind of a fantasy sort of world, or whatever. Now they're like, no, this is the realm of. Life. This is the realm of light. And this is the realm of death. One of the books. I'm yeah. not sure if it's in Malign Sorcery or in there. You can have command traits from specific uh, worlds realms. now. Yeah, it says right here. You have realm commands, and then command the land, and then you have realmscape features in particular that you can roll on. Obviously, which is always more fun to actually create some uh, environmental effects. Well, and this is some of the stuff that we've done like locally with our kind of our theme narrative days yeah. and games and stuff is we've said, okay, now you're in a space where gravity is light and you can move farther, or it's really rainy and stormy, but they've actually brought that in uh, to the individual realms to give you that well, they flavor. They did bring some of that out with uh, malign portents. Port port yeah. Just sort of yeah. testing the waters, I think. Yeah, no, this is, this is huge. I mean, we're on page 260. Like, this is just a monstrous thing. Uh, talking about open play games, uh, walking their way through it. 
open war battle plan generator. Oh, so a little bit like the open war cards, but they're giving you a taste of that. Um, and they're just saying, instead of playing the same six missions all the time again, you got different oh, missions, that, different twists, and yeah. sudden death, and the ruses. Really and cool. And you know what, again, it's very compact, right? So instead of having a, an entire page per map, which you don't really need, they've actually got it all in one table, so you can really quickly see it all in front of you at once. It's nice. Yeah, it's going to be nice to spend a ton of time with this. Uh, multiplayer games, this Look looks that. like... Double uh, missions on one page. Yeah. It's and amazing what just changing the font does to things. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. You're talking about creating ladder campaigns, whether it's at your store or with your group of friends. Really cool. And then narrative, which is... Um, I know it's not for everybody. We do a lot of narrative stuff with kind of points built in as a structure for that. Sieges, ah, oh, sieges. See, this is something we haven't had forever. Like, yeah. when was the last time Fantasy put out a siege uh, set of rules? Well, Eighth Edition was. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's it's definitely Sigmar is catching up and becoming a, a more full game. Whereas before it was their litmus test to see if they could make Fantasy still succeed. Now they know it can, so they're really pouring a lot more resources into it. I mean, you can just tell by the rule book. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous tome. And, and not only that, it seems to cover not just the basic rule set, but it actually drives into some community building and, and organized play and open play, etc. There was yeah. one of the missions there is like uh, argument of kings, and you're just like, I can see that having a lot of fun. No, like beer and pizza? Yeah, yeah. seriously, like, okay, I got my green and clean one. You got your... a thousand points, you have a thousand points, there's six other people with a thousand points, let's go. Well, yeah. answer the question, what do you do when one guy's got RK on, another guy's got Nagash, and they're really... Who would win, eh? Well, they're really <laughs> gigantic characters that are kind of only belong in the largest of games. And if you don't really feel like playing... 4,000 point games, 3,000 point games, at least you can still bring them out more often than you could have before. Because yeah. those guys just dominate if you, if you don't do a large enough game. Yeah. No, I am so looking forward to spending a ton of time. And then they cover matched play, uh, they got all the battle line uh, kind of setups and all that, Vanguard, Battlefront, and War Host, uh, Battle Host and War Host, which is good. Uh, they give you basic times they figure that it should take you to do it, picking your army. So this is all stuff that we've essentially seen before. Uh, they're folding their triumphs in there as well, which is kind of cool in a, in a pitched battle. I don't know if triumphs were, were triumphs part of the pitched battles before? Triumphs have always been around, and a lot of guys don't bother with them because triumphs are always, if you won your last game, roll in the triumph. So I'm doing yeah. a series yeah. of pickup games. <laughs> yeah. You know, every, I guess everyone's a winner according to themselves. Yeah, 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 yeah. The last game they played, so they should have a triumph. So a lot of guys have just skipped over it, as far as I know. But it's a great mechanic to have in your group of friends, just like, oh man, uh, you know, whoever, whoever uh, loses moves first kind of thing, that kind of thing. Really cool. Lots and lots, and loads and loads and loads of battle plans. Love it. Um... Oh, battle strategies table. So this is this is the sixty six cards from forty k. This is your tactical objectives. <laughs> That's awesome. There's uh, Mangles miniatures online did uh, basically the same thing. They call it vital objectives, and they're like, here's the forty k cards. But we've we've done an art chart, so it's all for Age of Sigmar. And I think GW just took that cue as like, you're right, we should be doing this. Yeah. This is where you're scoring points every turn as opposed to playing for a couple turns and jockeying position and then hopping in onto the objective and, and sort of just camping on them to win the game. Now it's a little bit more the game can flow from turn to yeah. turn. Yeah, that's fantastic. I love it. Beautiful. And then you got your army roster. You can photocopy that if there is such a thing anymore. Uh, but there, there you go. Um, first impressions of the book? Uh, really high quality, actually. Really impressive. And you could tell they covered a lot of ground and they incorporated a lot of feedback, which I yeah. think is definitely Huge. the right direction. You, yeah. can, you can see they're actually moving the needle I, forward. I'm just going to kick the camera too. I, I am probably not going to get any sleep when I finally pick up my copy because I'll be spending all night reading the damn thing <laughs> yeah, in the first it's, place. It's thick, like narrative. There's, you know, it, normally they fill it up with artwork and then they, uh, and, and then they, you know, they write in between the lines, but this is thick with... Uh, they, they poured a ton of resources into this. Like if... If you've ever been wondering if Sigma, how Sigmar is doing, I think this rule book here, this is not a, a last ditch effort to make it work. This is them going, it is doing so well that we're gonna give it the due that it deserves. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, cool. All right, uh, next up, let's look at the, uh, the Battle of, Gr of Glim's Forge. Now this is kind of the tradition, it's always you know the battle of something, something. Uh, 
it actually looks like there's multiple pieces in this package. It oh, there like is the, too, uh, yeah. Probably the instructions on how to build the, at least is one of them. Oh yeah, no, that's a good point. Yeah, so it'll all be packaged together. I uh, just hope the uh, data cards are better for, uh, proportioned than the old data cards that they produce. Yeah, the, the shrink the PDF ones or whatever? Well, I really liked them, but I've heard, and we'll see in a second here, that they've moved uh, moved the needle ahead. That'd be great. Okay, so let's start with the basic stuff. We've got the uh, uh, the Soul Wars um, for the Night Haunt and the Stormcast. We've got basically their assembly instructions here. Oh, full layout of the sprues. That's actually pretty sweet. Uh, contents of. Uh, they give you all the bases there to make sure you got everything in. And they've got the usual... Uh, I, I, my, one of my favorite things, and I've been commenting about these on the videos, I don't know if you guys have seen them, but uh, I love how they say when you assemble things, the parts are blue to kind of carry forward. And they even show you where to apply uh, glue for the most part. They say glue these two spots here and then they fit together. So uh, really cool. And they've got color in it, which is actually, I always find really nice. I'm surprised that they're not just black photocopies, like <laughs> black and white, you know, yeah. so many of the companies just kind of like, you know what, we're not going to put money into into this side of the equation. And Workshop's like, no, I'm sorry, we're going to go yeah. all the way. It's like they took a page out of Lego's book. It's just, yeah, yeah. extremely <laughs> user-friendly. They, they know that there's going to be a lot of people who've never done this before. They're excited by this, and they're going to make it as easy as possible. Like well, with, with the new sculpts, they're, they're so, um, I, and it's, it's this weird thing. And sometimes when I'm doing like an assembly video or a review, I'll always break down and stop and say, okay, here's where I had problems and all that, because they fit together so seamlessly well that it's really important to have a really good idea of what lines up and the angles that it goes in on and all of that. So... Uh, awesome. Those night haunts look so flimsy, though. No, you know what I found, though? Yeah, they, maybe. They, maybe. I know it's stronger than they are, but so, they look flimsy. Yeah, we'll have to see what where the dangly bits are that break, because with the Mechanicum stuff, it turns out they're yeah, actually they quite solid, and they don't break unless it's something pointing in a weird direction oh, unsupported. They're slotted based. Oh, that's cool. So that'll make them... A lot stronger than yeah. I was thinking. Than the weak little uh, kind of hooves and stuff. Very cool. So we'll, we'll have to see. But uh, I've, I've been pleasantly surprised so far. I think they've come a long way from the Necron Wraiths. Yeah. Or the, the Tau feet. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Tau feet. Yeah. yeah. I hate building my Tau. Okay, so uh, I gotta keep moving here. So we're gonna move on to the Battle of Glim's Forge. So uh, again, this is our kind of intro. So if we started the game for the first time, oh man, even more. They're talking about the Soul Wars. So this is literally an entire campaign, almost like a, a supplement, uh, which is looking pretty darn solid. Talking about the Sancrosanct Chambers, and then we're getting a breakdown. Now this is kind of returning to some of the older books. Now, uh, obviously with the uh, War Scrolls that you were downloading, you weren't getting a whole lot of detail about the people that were in it. Uh, you'd get like a brief one paragraph description, but they've really stepped up. But if you bought the old Battle Tomes, those all had like tons and tons of stuff. Right, like, right, like right. Yeah. Workshop knew right from the beginning that uh, a lot of guy, a lot of the detractors of the game were always saying things like, well, it doesn't have much backstory. And they always compared the one-year-old Age of Sigmar, or heck, even now, three years old, two years old Age of Sigmar to the 30 years old of, 30 years worth of content that 40K has been generating. Yeah, and that's and a Workshop knows they're behind on that, so they've, they've been really steaming for it as fast as they can. And there's a lot of stuff going on in all the things. Like, I haven't read any of the novels, but I know guys that have, and they're just like, there's a lot of stuff going on. They're doing their best job to catch up and make it so it feels like the rich universe. Especially with all those like campaigns, like Realm Gate Wars and whatnot, it advanced the story. And they without made having a point. To change the yeah, rules. and they made a point of those to make it very steeped in. This is stuff that's actually happening. Whereas a lot of stuff in 40k is like, this is a battle that happened over in this corner at some point, and you know it, they're fairly, you know. But there's battles everywhere, so this isn't really you know. Don't don't worry too much about this. Where Sigmar's like everything that they talk about is a, is a solid detail of what's going on in there in their backstory. So what's neat about this is one, the painting is cool, and they're going to be selling some form of system to achieve this effect. Oh yeah, that guy's all, well, I mean the guy in the mount is just nuts. But what's happened is, is they've probably got a system uh, that they're gonna kind of show off on how to get these exact effects. Um, and that's just kind of showing how far G-dubs come. Um, just as I'm about to finish this off, I just kind of flipping through while we're talking. But what's interesting is there's no profiles here. Um, that's all gonna be on the cards. So mm. they're just giving you a, a whole book of you know, just this is the backstory. This is kind of the, the and fluff the, and, and what's this going is on. What I mean, like they're giving you so much stuff that's yeah. gonna—they're they're trying to enrich the universe as fast as they can. Instead but, of it just being new pieces of plastic, they're really trying to get into the lore. But yeah, you, it's not just a bunch of stat lines. 
But when you jump into the game, and I, I, I show up at the store, I want to play a game, or uh, show up at a buddy's place or whatever, I've now got these, which are insanely portable, and you know, super easy to kind of take a peek at. So they've got each of the individual uh, characters in here, uh, or, or all the different units, I guess. And um, these remind me of the um, uh, Silver Tower cards. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it's a little better organized. It's not that shrunken PDF where, you know, they got the, the, the kind of... The low-sized card with the super tiny font. Super tiny <laughs> font, only covering left to right. So it's a much better balance. That's like they revisited, uh, they opened up Illustrator and InDesign, and they kind of re... They revisited wow, what they were like, doing. What, wait a second. What is this says portrait? What does landscape mean? <laughs> what does landscape <laughs> mean? How is there a eureka That's, moment? How, how is it for sure? Landscape. So on the back, we actually have a full look at the individual yeah. model, right? So that's actually really nice. They don't do that with the other unit cards. And then just to get a really, actually, we'll go this way. On the back, we have a picture of all of the actual units. And then on the front, you've got all the breakdown of all the rules. Super cool. Which is really nice. Yeah. I wish more 40K factions had cards like this. Well, I, I bet if these do well. so much easier some days. Okay, so there are, now this is actually super cool. Um, so we've got this. Now look at this one. So I pull this out. I'm you know, getting ready to set up the next one or whatever. But it's a more rules intensive dude. They so they give you more on stuff. They channel. They're just like, you know, we're, we're not going to make the, they, they set the limits how small the type was going to go. I mean, this is definitely smaller type. No, it's the same. They just extended it up yeah. onto a oh, second I page. That, I thought that was a little no. bit smaller than no. that. But what a but great idea. So, yeah. so for your special characters, you still got the same kind of footprint. Whereas with the, uh, with the other ones, with the larger cards, they had to accommodate the big ones, but they had a universal size for everything. Yeah. This is a much more efficient, much better way to, to kind of look at it. So we got a whole pile of the different characters. Uh, not as many cards for the Sigmarine guys. But yeah, and they're really dressing up the dudes with robes and stuff now, which I'm really looking forward to seeing. So it is something totally unique from the other starter boxes, the other pieces that are in there. And of course, the stats, yeah, really solid. I always look at tabards and whatnot on clothing. I'm like, I want to paint this differently than I painted all of my other ones. And they all end up looking the same. The same tabards, yeah, the, the bone and the whatever. It's, it's White and white. <laughs> Red Greg's, and white. Greg's the big Stormcast guy, so that hand reached out pretty yeah, yeah. quick for those stats, for sure. <laughs> so what's interesting, and I'm sure everybody knows this already, but for all the Stormcast stuff, it's all net new. So this is a great way to actually get into all these new units, which will couple with some of the easy-to-build stuff that's potentially coming. Super cool. Uh, core rules. This should look a little familiar to everybody. So this is going to be the first look, and we should actually spend... Um, maybe a little bit of time going separately. We're just going to cover kind of the, 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 the book itself. Oh, so it's no longer the just fold piece of paper. It's an actual book this time. Yeah, and it seems to be like a little bit more description on kind of what's going on. So this is moving away from the, you know, the two-page rule book um, with, you know, the other two pages on terrain and victory and stuff. But it's a great kind of starter uh, element in here. And still, it comes down to 18 pages. Including and, setup and allegiance. Oh, and again. you know what's what's great is this. Just today, the the Warhammer channel put this document up for download, so you can get you can have this for free. Like there's still store on your with, tablet or whatever. Anyone, yeah. if you want the rules for if you want just the rules to play for free, here they are. How about it? If that's you don't that's like how confident they are. Storm undead yeah. dudes. You don't have to buy the big box to get the rules. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic. If you don't fantastic. want to buy the big rule book, it's your loss. But you know what? At the very least, it's drive before you buy. Yeah, and I'm sure the, the rule book is clarified and this and that, but uh, it's nice to have that nice compact uh, you know, version of those rules, especially if you're just starting out. That would be great. The thing you bring to the gaming table and the thing you leave at home. Yeah, yeah exactly. Don't exactly. need to bring the 300-page book. Yeah, when... Uh, yeah. when uh, well, you know, that's a good point, because you're saying when you open this up, I kind of still like the mini books. This, this is your mini book. Yeah. It's, it's not the small size, but it's light. And yeah, and it's soft bound. It goes underneath your, it holds your dudes up. Right, it absolutely, will yeah. fit in your own battle tomes if you're going to bring those, so you can just slide it in. All right, so to start here, uh, they kind of just talk about the core book, collect, build, paint, play. And so this is kind of their introduction to the world. So even if you're not uh, a, a kind of a Warhammer fan, and a lot of their marketing lately has been pushing towards uh, a newer audience. Um, there's such a massive... Um, 
such a massive investment now lately in board games and you know the the gaming culture has really expanded so they're saying this is what your game is about and it's just a quick introduction here read this get excited and then start with the core rules really cool no, the, everything I'm seeing here is just absolute quality uh, throughout. Really happy with it. There's a lot of material too. Yeah, like there's there's a ton. Like the yeah. the value on the the books and stuff is 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 worth it alone. All right, so uh, set up the same way they did before. Uh, they've got kind of the uh, the Sigmar piece on the back. A little rough from the shipping though. That's uh, that's not so great. But let's take a look. So we open it up. Oh yeah, and all it is is night haunt, night haunt, night haunt. Look at that. Uh, big pile of bases in here. And yeah, they're all, you're absolutely right, they're all slotted bases and kind of pegs and all that, which is great. They're doing the Lord of the Rings thing where they pre-punch the holes, so it's just, it's ready for you to go. Very cool. I think they said these are ones like the easy build, so you don't need glue for some of them. That might be cool. Uh, this starter set? They're actually hexagons if you look really, really closely. Oh, look at and that. that. Yeah, yeah. Good find. You're actually going to get a really tight fit on it, and there's going to be a lot less wiggle. That'd and you won't rotate it so half yeah. the model's off and half the model's on. No, that's huge. Okay, so we'll pull this out, and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the Night Hot first, because those are what I'm most oh, There's interested. another basin there. Oh, there's going to be a couple at the bottom, the bigger ones, too. Yeah, so like the... Uh, Okay, so we've got, uh, with the Night Haunt, uh, yeah, one of the great points that we mentioned earlier is that everything is slotted, uh, which is going to be massive for all these little flimsy, kind of connecty bits, you know, like the graveyard and stuff. But the plastic, I'm uh, even feeling right now, just kind of bending a little bit, it's pretty high, high density. Like, it's really cool. Like, even the, even this stuff is actually not... Not too bad. Uh, this is going to be the Nightmare Army to store. It used to be the old Chaos Space Marines with all the spikes. Um, but yeah, really nice. And it is a snap fit. Look at that. Yeah. Everything's just absolutely snap fit. So you can get rolling right away. Uh, we'll be gluing them, obviously, but uh, very cool. Lots of different layers and depth. Really like it. Cool. What else we got in here? Oh, yeah, like just the grimness. Is <laughs> It's just so evident in all this. Someone's in the locks. They're totally messed up and just nobody looks happy. This is great. Really happy about their unhappiness. No, that's pretty rad. The new Mortark that they've shown pictures of. I'm like, that is going to be so pretty. Yeah, I would hate to paint some of those things, though. Yeah. So this is not a double sprue. That's actually a single sprue for the whole thing. Yeah. For any other potential kits coming. Yeah, massive, and look at even stuff like the trident. Like, look at that trident with the with the with the you know mystical, you know haze kind of coming off it and all of that, and just all these collected kind of brutal weapons and yeah, nobody's happy. This is great, super cool. And then this guy. This is kind of one of the big selling points for me is the the big huge monster this guy. Guy is pretty incredible. Yeah, it's. There's loads of detail, and he's got his, you know, kind of little friends kind of coming along as well. So look at the cloth here. You can actually see the ribs. It might be hard to see on the camera, but you can actually see the ribs underneath yeah. through the cloth. Yeah. That, that is sculpture. this guy. Yeah. I'm just going to get nice and close. And yeah, you can see the same up here. You can see the actual ribs through the yeah. cloth, so they've actually sculpted it all the way through. And it doesn't, like, you know it's CG, you know, uh, not CG, but you know it's computer-aided uh, design, you know all the other stuff, but it's just such a nice, organic look and feel. They really, I mean, they just crossed a line, and all of a sudden everything, it doesn't look CG or blocky yeah. anymore. Look at that, though. So if you're going to have any problems, you see some little pieces like this, that bone right there, uh, that might be uh, risky. Yeah, I think these guys are going to be the ones you definitely uh, carry around in a uh, one of those really soft kind of cases, but really nice and just even the just and just I think um, the mood uh, is one of the things that's really caught my attention is just this kind of you know, reaching up and just this mystical you know kind of mist and haze and you know everything's kind of flowing off out of the the sensors and all that really top shelf and look at this like the the keys and the locks like. Each, each person has their own absolute character. Beautiful. No, really, really good. And then in here, we've got more. And this is the same sprue. So this is a double of uh, this other sprue 
here. It looks like, yeah, there's the Trident there. So there is one bit of duplication, but all the models are unique, which is, which is great. So you get two of the same model and a big horde of your, of your Nighthawk guys. Not bad at all. Crazy cool. All right, uh, moving along, let's check out the Stormcast. Now kind of the main bulk in there. What is this? That's the new crossbow. That's the crossbow because, head. Uh, they were lacking some artillery potentially. So uh, they're, they're, this the number one thing the Stormcast did really is fill in that that uh, magic user and artillery chunk a little bit here. But and that's still going to be a small lead army though, right? Like it's, oh yeah. Like it's going to be an amazing well, that's, crossbow. That's what allies are for, I guess. If you're doing Stormcast, yeah. you get allies just, that are, aren't scared to catch swords for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you're looking at this thing. It's a huge, actually, it's much bigger than I looked when you saw it. It's going to be this massive yeah. piece. Like the, the Empire Cannon is not going to be nearly that size as well. And the quilting in the armor, that's kind of a new uh, thing as well. Before it was like a, a dragon plate kind of chain mail. But this is like a quilting in the in the robes and all that. That that would look yeah, really nice so in a bright royal color. This is what you'd see where it's just smooth, right? Is, so actually seeing this checker plating, that's actually going to look really really nice and be easy to paint. Super uh, washable, yeah. Lots of detail. So uh, and again, this is one of the modernizations that they're bringing forward to add more depth, so you don't just have another cloak. Yeah, and the so banner. Daniel is just pointing out that with the uh, the crossbow, it goes on a sixty mil base and the feet basically go to the very edge of the base. Yeah. So it is going to be... <laughs> it's going to be massive. Yeah, it's going to be a show. hefty boy. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, so... Right there. So, yeah, Look at the that. Yeah. doesn't necessarily do it justice, but, uh, yeah, it's huge. That's massive. And you can even look at the uh, <laughs> just the bolt that it's going to actually plug into. So I like the Stormcast. It, you know, a lot of their stuff has been really good in the past. I've had one criticism, and it's just maybe for me from like the, the model's perspective. Uh, they didn't have a lot of emotion to them. And I get that they're emotionless, you know, ghosts and all the other stuff. But you look here and you look at the banner carrier, like they're just up there and they're standing up like really super straight and strong, you know, with the, with the, you know, the, the, with the, with the banner up in the, uh, uh, the icon up in the air and, you know, the, the, the seals kind of flowing off to the sides. And they have a presence. They, yeah, now. they really have they a presence. They do actually before. a face, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the heroes. So, uh, yeah. And a face, yeah. What do you know? They, they've got faces for a, sure. A face that you do not want to immediately cut off and replace with just a helmet so you don't have to look at it anymore. Yeah. No, very cool. And like the big hammer and all this, like all the characters yeah. in there. But even this character, like without seeing it assembled, you know, they got their kind of Rosarius with them. You know, they brought in more of the kind of religious elements in there. They've got the big kind of hammer up in the sky. Ah, just awesome. This mace, it just looks like it's a symbolic, uh, it's kind of like a, a, a symbol of office. But I mean, it would do some wicked damage too. Yeah, I think they really did a better job with innovating a lot. There's there's a couple swords here that are just a sword, you know, that's fine. But they definitely got a lot more creative with the actual uh, weapons on a lot of the Stormcast. Well, part. I don't know if you can see it. Okay, so uh, I don't think the camera's going to pick this up. But, okay, even just the sword, they redesigned the sword. So you got the sword, and the sword's got the two kind of side panels or whatever. And then they'll cut that edge so it's got, you know, one, two, three, four faces to it, like a die or something. But they've actually got a little bit of an indent, like a little bit of a hollowing out of the points on the sword. So if you paint that with like a blue wash, uh, it'll just sit right in there, and instead of trying to paint in kind of detail, it's actually in the sword itself. So it's a subtle thing, but I think, oh, yeah. but that just shows where they've gone with this kit. You know, awesome, really, really good. Yeah, and just like the the uh, night haunts, it's actually easy to build, and you can actually see it's got the inset. Uh, just to look at that real quick, if you flip it over, you can see it's actually got the the placement for everything for it to go together really, really easy. So that's actually an improvement on the previous uh, starter kit. Yeah, no, absolutely. So we got two of the same here. Um, and uh, again, you get more of the, you get, the, the heads. you get more of the hammers, you get more of the shields, yeah, like and the shields are super, and super engraved, or super kind of set up with, uh, with detail and kind of filigree and all that. Awesome. And what's interesting here is it's actually kind of the new battle line for Stormcast, but that's, it's got both of them. So it's not just all Liberators. You actually have Liberators as well as the, uh, the uh, Crossbowmen. And the Crossbowmen actually have like religious iconography uh, on the actual home for the, uh, the head. Yeah, and like even, even off the front of the, all the robes, they've got these really cool Rosarius hanging down. Yeah. Like very cool. And they've got their tomes at the back that look like little fortresses. Now, this is, this is quality stuff. 
And look at the, like just even the dynamic posing and the, the robes flowing and all that, like lots of, well, lots of emotion truly. So super pleased, awesome. Now to finish things off, oh, look at that. Like that's nuts. The big griff. Yeah, it's huge. He actually looks, he, he's either posed bigger or he physically is bigger than the other griff hounds. But he, uh, he looks huge. No, I think he's like, a, he's like a big daddy griff, yeah. And this has got, well, you know what's really neat? If you look at all the, um, if you look at heraldry, like European heraldry and all that, what's amazing is that the, the griff, right, the, uh, the lions or whatever, they've got this pose to them. And one, one foot is down, one foot is up, and one is reaching out. And it's actually got like big kind of, it's, it's very heavily, you know, paying homage it's to that. It's the rampant pose. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, exactly, exactly. I want to see that one side by side with the, uh, the Death Knight, just to see how high up they are with each other. Yeah. Because that guy goes on a 90 mil base. A 90 mil? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> I was thinking it was going to be 75 like the other guy, but nope, he's on a big base. This is, this is interesting, actually. The staff is integrated into the cape here, so you can see this entire piece is one actual piece of plastic yeah and they've done a really good job to make sure that you don't miss you know the 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 twist or the turn or whatever like this thing when it fits together it's gonna be really stable yeah and and again they've got all these great kind of keys and slots to go in and see what's going on beautiful awesome really really cool all right um last piece is going to be our uh, malign sorcery box um this of course was one of the big changes is they've got uh, essentially, they've got uh, representations for all the for all the magic, and you know they've got uh, you know from you know they're like look at the cogs. They've got the quicksilver swords. It's probably one of my favorites there so far. This big massive axe pendulum. You know that's not cool. The big burning head. It's literally called the burning head, uh, which is great. And the emerald life swarm. So just all these animals coming out of this magical. Next, <laughs> there's the uh, Ravenax gnashing jaws. Uh, why not have a monster squig? Uh, shackles, grave tide. Look at that. So this big thing sweeping across the table. So so much that we can do now with uh, these new things. There's the big blowfish, the purple son of Sirish. Shirish, Shirish, Shish, Shirish. Shirish. Shirish, yeah, Shirish. It's the sushi the realm head. Of death. Yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not. Uh, they're not shy. They're just kind of shyish, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, Kyle's opened this up about 50 times because I thought, oh no, that'll spoil it. Uh, but his biggest joke is that you open it up and right away, it's the big bag of doom, uh, which is uh, which is hilarious. Oh, and oh, and the book. The oh, book. the big book of sorcery. And there's cards. Oh yeah, and there's the uh, their unit cards because they are ah, actually units. Ah, very cool. They've got all the goodies in here. And you know what? It's funny because they've never had cards for the for the spells previously. Just a quick look at that. Well, the, la the last points. time they had stuff like this, I was saying earlier today, was back in second edition 40K, they would have things that like, oh, I throw a vortex screen, now it wanders around the battlefield. And that was, they got rid of that for third and fourth edition, and then when um, Apocalypse? Apocalypse came out, then they brought that back in, and now this is gonna be a real thing. So these are a little different, they're all back the same with Malign Sorcery, which is great. Is that for randomizing? Uh, quite possibly. I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. think so. No, because you can choose. I believe you pay points for them now. So, okay. so and not a lot going on here, but it's obviously describing what they've all got. So all the different abilities, uh, the burning head. Obviously, I'm going to have a burning head. You know why? Just to have the burning head. Uh, it sounds awesome. Uh, the gnashing uh, jaws also must haves. I also for sure. think that they're affected by the realms that you're fighting in. So depending on which one you are, you're like, I don't want to use this because it will blow up in my face if I do. Yeah, super cool. And yeah, that, having that bit of synergy. Like, have you thought about that vortex in that realm with these guys and all that will be? And some of these are rules for malign sorcery that'll apply to older models. Like the the Balewind vortex is an old exactly. Model, yeah, yeah, yeah. An old model they did. Very cool. That's still available. So looking at the rooms. Well, this is like a full deal. That's where I cut ah, a fade. 
Look at those. Are those the icons of Siege from... No, those, those are the symbols of the realms, I want to say. Those okay. are Because the, the realms are based on the colors of magic, and all the colors right. of magic have got right, right. a different Oh yeah, symbol. those are the old symbols for the uh, colleges of magic from the 8th edition. This I one with say. the wheel reminded me of Six, Silver seven, Tower. Six, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. But yeah, no, it's... Uh, that was the big carryover from Old Warhammer to this was okay. the, the Colleges of Magic are now the different realms. So again, really solid assembly instructions. And they're easy to and build. And this is too. all easy to build as well. Yeah. Which is what the first couple sets should really be. Oh, and, and oh, like, yeah, you know, what it is is they, they know that a lot of guys want to build their armies. They don't want to have to spend a ton of time on, on stuff like this. So Workshop has just gone with like, you know what? You're going to buy this, and you can put it together. It'll be their fancy templates if you don't want to put the extra work into them, and that's that's okay, and too. And they're colored, right? Yeah. And the so, color, yeah, so, I mean, it's just easily to use. Like, even look at the Aether Void Pendulum, one piece. Snap it out, trim your sprues, plug it into the slots, you're done. Yeah. So the, uh, the Grave Tide wall, I've only seen some pictures of it from above, so I didn't know that it had, like, skulls. As part of the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really interesting. But it's all one. It's all one piece. Oh, sorry, it's two pieces. But uh, they come together super nice, and then it's done. But it's, it, the, the the base is even part of the. It's even integrated into the base, so you don't have like a blob on a base. It's actually kind of integrated in, which is pretty sweet. Yeah, the uh, the swords sword, are swords one. are all one as well. <laughs> I believe it's pronounced swords. Oh, s the, the swords, the s, s words, words, the s words. Yeah, absolutely. And it says no glue with the easy to build, so there must be some. So it'll just be push fit and yeah. yeah, push fit. Like I said, they they're really making it so they're they're breaking down your resistance. If this was a full on hobby kit that you had to buy and put together and and prime and paint, you really wouldn't care about putting these in your armies. No, and when you when you buy it, you come back from the store. Okay, let's sit down and assemble for two and a half hours. Not going to be not going to be what you're wanting to do. It's going to be let's let's play. What's this new thing? You'll and choose off your you spell, go. put it together in five minutes, and go. Yeah, this is my spell. Snap it together, cut it out, and off you go. Yeah, you can come into the store. And go. I'm picking that up now. Wow! Look, look, look at that. Actually, uh, look at that first page there, just real quick. Um, they really went all in on showing here w with this coloring, either Photoshop or dry ice or whatever, really showing these spells on the field. That's yeah, really nice. and how they really dominate the field too, which is they should like the big, you know, Gandalf level spells should be really dominating the field in a big way. It's like, well, there's your purple bell rog. Well, here's my fire bell rog. Yeah, it's exactly. Sequence. Yeah, and it's it's it. They've actually got, well, like kind of a presence and a personality as opposed to another version of magic missile. Um, so just taking a look right now. So they're really kind of showing, really what's going on with all these different things and the gnashing jaws. Very nice, very subtle. So they're talking again very much about, so they're leaving it to the cards, and they're just giving lots of history about what's going on with all these things and where they're from and all that. Manifestations of magic, so they're talking about just kind of the painting guide. Yeah, really nice. I like that it comes with a painting guide. Well, it's, the, yeah, they've got kind of a feature of this is what it looks like, and then they break style. into heavy metal yeah. style, and then this is how we painted it, uh, obviously using their, their system, which is great. Look at the yellow crystals. That'll be a cool thing to, to pull off. Really nice. And it's different. It looks different than any of the other and models that are out there. Plans. And more battle plans. Which you is great. Do campaign. Sorry to interrupt. I think you can do like a campaign about two forces trying to bounty hunt these random spells moving around the board. Oh, awesome. Oh, and you know what's funny is I, with all the battle plans out there, I have no idea how some communities just want to keep playing the same scenarios out of that four-page rule book, and that's all they want. Every tournament, every event is just, let's roll for it, let's put down six pieces of terrain. When in reality, you could... I mean, how many games of Sigmar are you realistically going to play in a year? You know, if you did one a week, that's 52 games, and there's, like, how many hundreds of battle plans? Like, it, it, it absolutely blows me away. Oh, Spells of the Realms as well. Yeah, no, Look I remember plans. reading it that they are coming up with that, so if Again, they're trying to bring a lot of story into it, so you're not just playing pickup battles somewhere. Yeah. You're at this realm, and this realm gives you these benefits or these detriments. Here's all the spells this realm brings. So it's not just, you've got, what were the three spells in Sigmar? Myst Mystic Shield. Arcane Bolt. Arcane Bolt. And it was all Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield, wasn't it? There was no... So there was a third one, but uh, yeah, 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 the yeah. one that nobody uses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
and artifacts. Artifacts, power, weapons of Gur, relics of Gur. So, th like, literally, shaman. So, yeah, this is the one I was thinking about earlier in the rule book about where you can get artifacts. So you can have your army be in sight, Shais, but they're from the land of beasts or whatnot. Wouldn't that be cool to, like, uh, go roaming through a different realm uh, all the time and then come out with an artifact and use that in your narrative games till Bob dies or something, right? So you got the pitch battle profiles in there. And the points you pay for your for your 40 spells. points, 60 points. There's one that's 100. Which one is the purple sign purple is 100. Sign is 100. Yeah. But that's not bad. Like, it, you'll use them. Like, they'll just be a part of your, your game. And a couple more battle plans. Just Especially for, if you have big... This like, is their straight-up pitch casters. battle ones for, uh, yeah. for using points and whatnot. Brilliant. Not really, really good. Sweet. All right. Next up, we have the big bag of models. Is it a Ziploc? It is. <laughs> it's a Ziploc no at the top. No way. <laughs> so I've been wondering why they put it in a bag, and that's why. They're, they're basically giving you a way to store all your, all all your all stuff. I didn't realize the plastic was uh, colored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the big thing. I so. knew the pictures like, were colored for... <laughs> Ziploc bag. That is so awesome. You know what that is, because this stuff is not as, I don't want to say it this way, but it's not precious. They're like, no, no, this is just spell effects. If you really don't want to crowd up your carrying case, here's a bag to carry all your stuff. If you're not going to paint it, you don't have to worry about it being... Yeah, even after you built it, you could just throw well, it in the bag. Also, yeah, it'll fit your books, and it's not too small, right? Yeah. Huge. Wow, that's a lot bigger than I yeah, thought. That that's actually. that's huge. Look at the gates. So you got your warp gate things going on uh, here. Yeah, I thought they were the, going to be the size of like a skink no, or something. That's got they to be are around six inches or so for that uh, that axe. Yeah, five, five or so. Yeah. Sometimes it's five, sometimes it's six inches. You know, never know. Depends. Here we go. For sense of scale. Yeah. So here's a, a skeleton, and there is the. Uh, there's the pendulum. Yeah, that would you could totally survive that, Skelly guy. <laughs> For shizzle, man. That's uh, that's great. But look at the cogs. Like it's just a, like these are single presses, right? So it's a it's a top and bottom. It's a single shot kit. Now this I can see, but it's it's actually got lots of variation left and right. Like it's not a flat surface, and the cogs have tons of depth. You know, they got all the runes on them, and look at the skulls, because you know G Dub skulls, awesome. And the portals. Really I really cool. like the portals. Yeah, and I like the, the fact that the portals aren't double sided, so you got the effect on the one side, so it's just this a wash coming in out, and they got the uh, the classic uh, Stargate water effect on the portal. But the plastic is good. The terrain stuff that they had before, kind of the, the extra terrain, was not very good at all, but this is like a nice, this yeah, is right. model plastic. This is really good. And the models that have bases, the bases are on the sprue, or like, so you don't have a separate bag of bases just hanging around. Yeah, like when you talk about quick assembly, there's the wall, there's where it slots into, done, right? You've got your, you've got your, you know, your your. The brown one there, Con. Yeah, so they've got that. Are they hexagons as well? Yes, they. Mm, oh no, those are circles. But. What what needs to be noted is it's not black bases, it's just tan. So again, they're trying to make it so that break down the barrier of getting this so that's you don't have to put any work any work into this if you don't want to. But look at like you throw it on the table and it's it's a nice close fit yeah. to whatever you're gaming on. Yeah, that's huge. Now I gotta prime that white <laughs> and then I gotta put sand on it. Uh I gotta sand it, prime it white and then paint it back down to brown. Thanks, James Games Workshop. Thanks, man. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that's awesome. No, it's just such an easy thing to start and play with. And look at the detail, like it's, there's loads. It could have just been a ball with bumps, but it's like loads of detail. You know, the kind of the souls trying to make their way out. Yeah, the goat died really actually doesn't do it justice. No, this is, loads of detail Those on crystals here. crystals actually look really cool too. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to see that kind of yellowy white effect. I would like to see somebody do like a, like a bright sort of silver sort of base coat and then do like a nice glaze over top of it just to get that sort of vibrant. Yeah, but this is something that everybody will want in their toolkit. Like in terms of a product that they're selling, that's that's pretty epic. Now, what could this be? It looks round. Could it possibly it's be the big purple? Skull? Vaguely purple, kind of pointy. Oh yeah, it's pretty rad. 
And there has a separate sprue for the internal components to hold it together. Oh yeah, there's the there's the uh, there's the skeletal structure. Awesome. I want to see how big that actually is when it's all built. Well, look at that top left one is just the face. That's the, the face. So that's like that's one face, right? So it's going to be. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle hands me again the skeleton. Dude, that is totally small. Look at that. Like it's uh, that is massive. I don't want to run into that on the table. I'm just saying. I look at that and I'm like, mm, well, the no. best part is he hangs on a table and stays there for the game, right? Yeah, so. it just yeah. goes and eats stuff. Not beautiful and loads of detail. Uh, I'm wondering how, but you know what? Actually, I was like, well, the trouble, the typical past GW kit would be okay, glue these together. They'd have like the little notches and the little tongue and groove system to kind of put it all together. But they've built a skeletal structure, and the skeletal structure has the holes and the pegs for the backs. So it's just, it literally, you just assemble so assemble this, and then you assemble the ball around it. It's yeah. the definition of plug and play. Yeah, exactly. Mwah! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> point, point. And then the last one here. Oh, it's huge. Like, look at this. Again, let's bring in the skeleton for detail. That is, well, this is yeah, this a is monstrous the, uh, wave. That's the tidal wave. The tidal wave. <laughs> These guys are all happy. Happy. They're just, uh, they're, they're on there. Going out like crazy. But look at the effects on this. It's like, it, it's really, really cool. And again, these would be super easy to paint. Even if you just did a wash and dry brush, and you just kind of did a detail and a slight wash on this guy, and then you just washed it to, or, or you glazed it, you could do a, such an awesome fire effect with glazes. Might have to do some of that. Yeah, the skull, the uh, giant purple sun, I'm just like, get a purple or a black painted purple give it a wash and you're pretty much golden beautiful well guys i think we're out of toys to look at um mm -hmm. the box oh the box oh no what's in the box anything else that well, no no i think we took more art we took we, yeah, more art there's the 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 fresh book and all that no and i think they we don't took have measuring sticks they don't have the whippet sticks anymore you, yeah too many people they, they don't have the sticks, sticks anymore that you could get in them all right, guys. Well, this is, uh, I mean, this is a pile of stuff we took a look at today. There's all of the, uh, the special spells. There is, like, in two boxes. And, and I just want to talk about, just a second, like, as we're kind of piling it all up to take a look at, just the massive amount of uh, lore and detail that's going on with these. Uh, I'm very excited to see the kit. Uh, I would say it's worth, both those kits are definitely worth, worth the cash to invest. And... Um, Really, you do two, uh, two new purchases, and you've got a lot of stuff to play with. So really, really happy, uh, really, really pleased with what's going on with this, and uh, a big thumbs up for me. Um, any quick comments, guys? I wasn't going to buy the uh, Malign Importance right away. I might have just changed my mind. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty rad, and you'll be able to use the stuff right away without, without much effort, for sure. Con, any thoughts? I think it's all incredible. I, it's just been what I've been seeing over the last while is Workshop is investing more and more into Age of Sigmar. And they're doing it not because they're trying to keep something in the fold. They're doing it because people are reacting to it and really getting into it. Um, and this just shows off just what the Workshop is capable of. I mean, we've always been saying this. Whenever guys start set, start of uh, step up, and try and be competitors, Workshop flexes their muscles and suddenly you see the most amazing models. And Time to be fun, yeah. Absolutely. Great. Um, on the Stormcast, I'm really impressed that they're not just bigger and better of the previous thing, right? It would, you know, that's what you usually see. You see power creep. I really feel like this is something different that does different things than the previous stuff. And that's really hard to do. And I think they did a really good job at it. It's, it's different stuff to add to the army as opposed to just bigger stuff. That means you'll never take the other stuff you ever owned. So um, I'm really excited to, to put it in the force. It'll be cool. Awesome. And uh, yeah, big thumbs up for me on all of this stuff. It's all uh, quite collectible. And I think it's, again, like Greg said, it's, it's unique, but it still fits in really well. And it's not just up and better. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to seeing these in. Uh, obviously, we're doing some painting tutorials centered around these. Uh, they're, they're, they're all pretty darn epic. So this is enough to go for a while. Um, so I just want to say thanks a lot to the guys for uh, hanging out with me for this preview. Thanks a lot for Imaginary Wars for having us down and taking a look at their preview copy. And um, obviously, if you like the video, please hit that like button. Uh, it helps get uh, the video and the channel and helps with all the YouTube algorithms and all of that. 
And if you're interested in more videos like this, uh, feel free to hit the subscribe button. And there's even a little bell beside it. And if you tag that, uh, you'll get harassed with all of our future videos on all your devices and all that. Uh, so thanks a lot for watching, guys. Hope it was of value to you. And we'll uh, catch you in the next video.